So yesterday we didn't have a new episode of Pick of the Week because honestly there's nothing from last week that was newsworthy to talk about. The season is still suspended and we're waiting for word what's gonna happen next. So the plan right now is to make season wrap up videos and we're starting off with my disappointments of the season. Now I did this video at the start of the season after about 10 games and some things have changed since then and some haven't so let's get right into it. And just a quick disclaimer, these are my disappointments this year. I might have had different expectations for some of these teams or players that I'm about to talk about so just keep that in mind. And my first disappointment of the season and probably my biggest disappointment of the season is the San Jose Sharks. Just the whole damn team. I had them as an early disappointment but I thought they would be able to get out of the slump they were in because the team they have on paper is incredible. Eric Carlson, Brent Burns, Will Couture, Evander Kane, Timo Meyer, and to me that sounds like a team that should be doing much better than being third last in the whole league, but they're down there somehow. And I mentioned it in the video at the start of the season and I'll mention it again because a big part of the problem is their goaltending. Martin Jones is not good enough to be a starter and the Sharks did play Aaron Dell a lot this year, but he's not that good either and when I look at the Sharks goaltending depth in their system, it's not looking that good and I would have said they should draft Jaroslav Skaro in the draft, but they traded away their draft pick in the Eric Carlson trade. Now they do have the Tampa pick in this year's draft but I don't think Escaro is going to drop down to 25 or wherever that pick will be so the Sharks will have to find a goaltender the hard way. And if we're looking at their skaters I mean come on I was expecting so much more from well at least Eric Carlson this year. I was gonna say Brent Burns too but honestly I don't have any expectations for him anymore. I don't think he's one of the best defensemen in the league. He's got a good shot and gets at least 10 or 15 goals per season but that's not a player that I would lean on as my number one defenseman. Eric Carlson is a player I would do that with though and yes he got injured midway into February and we could talk about his contract but that could be a whole different video. But Eric Carlson when he's on this game is one of the best defensemen in the league if not the best. But at the start of the season he was awful and he did improve a bit during the season but he didn't reach that level that we all know and love. And that has been a problem with him and the whole Sharks team because they're not playing to their potential. I hope they can find that level next season because they have a lot of good players. They should be competing for cups for another two or three years at least. But they need to fix their goaltending. That's their number one issue for me. Their goaltending needs to be fixed. And if they do, then they'll be better. All right, moving on from that, I'm going to talk about rookies and disappointing rookies. And I think we all have two rookies in mind. That's right, it's Jack Hughes and Capo Caco. Now I think it's easy to get ahead of yourself when talking about rookies and having disappointing rookie seasons and people are quick to throw out the bust card and I'm definitely not doing that. I think Hughes and Kaka already have things they excel at and will only get better at and I think they will be great players but their rookie seasons have been almost abysmal. And I don't want to crap on two 18, 19 year olds because being in the NHL at their age is an accomplishment in itself, but they were so talked about going into the season and they both had very underwhelming seasons. And they both had almost identical stats when it comes to points, which is a bit funny and also a bit freaky. And they're not very good those stats. And we can look at their advanced stats as well, they both had awful Corsi and their stats in general were just not good at all. And yes, they're 18, 19 year old players and you can make that an argument that they shouldn't have this much pressure on them but I think they should because you'd expect one and two from the draft to do better because they're two very exciting players with very exciting skill sets but they didn't deliver and therefore are disappointments to me. Another team that disappointed me this year were the Buffalo Sabres. Now this is probably my fault for expecting them to do better than last year and having hope for them because when I look at their team, a franchise center with hard potential in Jack Eichel, a franchise defenseman in Rasmus Stalin who had a few good weeks at the start of the season then went to a slump like the rest of the team but towards the end here I thought he was doing better. They have a good winger, Jeff Skinner coming off a 40 goal season, you'd expect him to build on that. Sam Reinhardt was looking to build on his good season from last year. Victor Olofsson coming in and having a really good year but unfortunately suffered an injury. The point I'm trying to make here is that there's a lot of promise with this team but they just don't live up to it. And I mentioned Jeff Skinner because last year he scored 40 goals and signed that huge contract and this year 14 goals in 59 games. 9 million dollars for 23 points. The Sabres will have to pray that this man will find his form again because that contract could get real bad real quick if it's not already real bad. But you know what, I'm dumb enough to give them one more year before I give up on them. Like I said, I see the promise, but if they keep playing me down, I'm not going to buy it anymore. Eichel and Dalin is such a good foundation to build on, and if the Sabres can't do that, then they're probably cursed. Going into my least surprising disappointment of the season, it's Sergei Bobrovsky. Now living up to a $10 million contract is tough. 
Living up to a $10 million contract when you're 30 years old is even tougher. Living up to a $10 million contract when you're a 30 year old goaltender is incredibly tough and Bobrovsky has not done it. Now this isn't a dig at Bobrovsky, he is a good goaltender, he showed it in Columbus but you don't pay goaltenders this much. I don't care, you just don't. You don't pay them $10 million when they're 30 years old and this is a prime example. His goals saved above average is awful, it's in the bottom 5 of the entire league. His stats in general are very very average. And sure, he can bounce back, but will he ever reach that Vesna level again that $10 million should get you? I don't know. Now this is more of a rant on his contract rather than his season, because if he was paid 3 or 4 million dollars, it would still be a pretty bad season, but 10 million dollars for this is awful. And the last big disappointment for me this season is the Nashville Predators. Now granted, they've been better since the start of 2020 when they fired Peter Laviolette, they're the 8th best team since New Year, but if this season is to continue, they're only in the second wildcard spot in the Western Conference and considering the team they have, it is quite disappointing and it obviously led to the Predators firing their coach Peter Laviolette. And when you look at the team they have, they shouldn't be in this position. A team with players like Philip Forsberg, Ryan Johansson, and I just have to quickly mention it about Ryan Johansson, his contract looks awful right now. They have Matt Duchesne, Ryan Ellis, and more and they shouldn't struggle like this. The only player I'm giving a pass is their captain Roman Josie, who definitely is a Norris Trophy candidate for me. And I might give Forsberg a pass too, I mean, he did score that incredible lacrosse goal, which by the way, is the best lacrosse goal of the season. But yeah, a team like Nashville shouldn't struggle like this, and that's why they're a disappointment of mine. And I have some honorable mentions, or dishonorable, depending on how you see it. Jamie Benn is not having a good season at all, but thankfully for him, Dallas are still doing well, so it's not as tough talked about but 39 points in 69 games is not very good for a player like Jamie Benn and the same goes with his fellow teammate Joe Pavelski. He's had a pretty poor season after signing as a free agent. You could maybe argue that Detroit should be on this list but for me they're absolutely not. They didn't have any expectations going into this year and we all knew they were tanking so there's really nothing to be upset about here even though they've had an awful season statistically. I have to say though I feel really really bad for Jimmy Howard in his last 20 starts he has lost every single game and his record this year is 2, 23 and 2. Two wins and that is absolutely brutal and sad to see. But that's gonna be it for today. Obviously there's a whole lot more disappointments this season and we can talk about it in the comments below. So leave a comment on who disappointed you this season and I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.